Good evening, students. Today I am going to for a video lecture here on the university for important topics for definitions and of ontology. So first we will see what is an ontology. So an ontology has two definitions. The first definition says that it is an hierarchical representation of objects. These objects belong to a particular reputation domain and they will uh, include object types, individual objects, or properties of a particular object, or it could be a relationship between the object. And the second definition for the ontology is it's a formal specification and explicit formal specification of the terms that are used to represent the agent's world. So in an ontology, definitions associate name of entities in the agent's world with human readable text and formal axioms. So whenever we say text, it describes the name and axioms. Uh, refers to the interpretation and use of the terms. So why is that we have something called as an ontological representation? What is the idea behind ontological representation? So it is mainly ontologies are used to represent knowledge. In that uh, previous years we have seen that you can represent knowledge in terms of rules. Now here it, uh, ontology is used for representing knowledge in the form of graphs. So once I say graphs, it consists of nodes and arcs, and here nodes represent objects or a situation or an event, and arcs represent the relationship between the nodes. The next term which we have to be very clear is what is ontological commitments? And uh, remember, ontologies are mainly used for agents, and agents uh, should be able to communicate uh, to the outside world. So once it is outside world, it could be either an user or an agent. So it could be. It could be an user or it could be an agent. So the ontology enables the agent to communicate by declaring the terms and the terms which the agent can understand. So what is required the ontology enables, once there is understanding, it enables knowledge sharing and also the reuse among the agents. So how is this possible? This is made possible by sharing a common set of vocabulary which the agent can understand. So what is ontological commitment is the proper definition and agreement to use a shared vocabulary in a coherent and consistent manner among multiple agents, among several agents is called as an ontological commitment. The next is instance. So what is an instance? It's simply an individual. It is a representation of a particular entity in the application domain. So in this example, this is now we are looking into two persons called Amanda Rice and Dan Smith. Both of them are individuals who are called as professors. So you can consider these individuals as instance of a general thing called as professor. So we indicate that an instance belongs to a concept an instance belongs to a concept by using the relationship instance of over the arts. So next is concept. What is the concept? It is simply a class. It is a general representation about what is common to a set of instances. These two persons are more than one is called the set. Both are individuals. They become set of instances and they, become, they belong to professor. So a concept is a general representation of these individual things and it can be re regarded as a representation of the set of instances. 
Next, why is this ontology required? Ontology is mainly for the purpose of generalization. So, what do you mean by generalization? It gives you the relationship between concepts of premises. So, what is relationship? We can look into this Venn diagram. I have a set P and I have a set Q, and Q is a subset of Q. So, you, we can consider this P as a concept, and Q as yet another concept, and we can say P is more general than Q. In other words, Q is more specialized than compared to P. So, a concept P is said to be more general or more a generalization of another concept Q, if and only if the set of instances represented by P also includes the set of instances represented by Q. An example here is given in the right hand side. We can see a staff member is an university employee who is also a person. So the person is more gentle and staff member is more specific. So what is generalization hierarchy? It is used for representing the generality relationships. So you can represent the generality relationships between the concepts in the form of graph. And remember, this is not a complete graph. It is a partially ordered graph. And that graph is called the generalization hierarchy. Here, the leaf nodes, the leaf nodes represent the instances of the concepts and the non-leaf nodes. Anything above is all called as non-leaf nodes. And they are at the upper level. And they represent the concepts. This is a concept. This is a concept. This is a concept. So individuals become the leaf nodes, and a more general class becomes the non-leaf node. Thank you.